Greetings brethren, once more we are talking about uh, coronavirus COVID-19. Uh, we'll sympathize with those who have lost their loved ones and those who are suffering, those who are in quarantine at the moment. We sympathize with you. We hope and pray that uh, the mercies of God will be upon you, that you may be healed. And also, I will ask you to do me a favor, please, as you watch this uh, uh, video, just press on that button, subscribe, and subscribe to this. We've got more to cover, especially on this subject. I've developed a great interest in the subject of coronavirus simply because it's a health promotional message. It's a health promotion subject, and also this is an infection. It will be with us for a little while. It's actually very important for us to understand what is happening. Events have moved with great speed in the world today. Uh, the nations are trying to contain this virus. Uh, new laws are passed overnight and implementation is very swift. Uh, many of us today you realize that we are behind, but however, events are moving at an unprecedented pace. As a preacher of the gospel, I always want to look at this from a biblical perspective. What does God say and what can this what does this mean to us? Yesterday, the entire Italy was locked down. No one is allowed to go out. No one is allowed to come in. Flights have been cancelled to Italy. What are they trying to do? They are trying to contain the virus within. As of today, the situation has gone to another level. Fear has gripped the nations. Huge monies have been set aside, especially here in England, to try and contain this spread. But however, the infection is spreading so fast. Coronavirus is causing havoc and anarchy in the cities all over the world, from America to China to Japan to Africa. They are all talking of this problem. And today, uh, the, the World Health Organization has declared coronavirus a pandemic, meaning that it's no longer a problem for one nation, but actually it's a problem for the entire world. Now the question is, where did this originate? When you read, you realize that, you know, this coronavirus originated in China. They believe that it's from a bat. It was first noticed from a fish market. It's from a live animal, and this animal is an unclean animal. But now the question is, how did... How was it transmitted to human beings? I think after this, the dust is set, you realize that PH infected theses and dissertations will be, will be written to try and study what exactly caused this problem to be transferred from animals to human beings. But it's actually very simple. It is because of consumption of animal meat, especially unclean meats. There is a statement which was written over 100 years ago in the, in the book Health for Living. It was written in 1887 and 1898. The statement says, When we feed on flesh, the juices of what we eat pass into the circulation. A feverish condition is created because the animals are diseased. And by partaking of the flesh, we plant the seeds of disease in our own tissue and blood. Then when exposed to the changes in a malarious atmosphere to epidemics and contagious diseases, the system feels their effects. It is not in a condition to resist diseases. In other words, uh, our systems, when we feed on that which is not good, our bodies become immune. When our bodies become immune and when we contact, we, we, when we eat that which is not good, then we tend to contract diseases. Therefore, you realize that, you know, the problem of this coronavirus started basically from a diet, what was being eaten. But now this is actually a problem. It's a disease. It's a condition which is spreading very fast. And God has warned us of this kind of pestilence. The Bible says in the book of Matthew chapter 24 verse 7, For nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom, and there shall be famines and pestilence and earthquakes in diverse uh, places. When we're talking of pestilence, we're talking of diseases. Now, it actually says that, you know, in the last days, 
we will have greater, uh, quite a lot of problems, and we have pestilence. And uh, it says this is just by the beginning of sorrows. That actually means that we are yet to see much greater things. It says in the book Maranatha, page 176, paragraph 3, calamities will come. Calamities most awful, most unexpected, and these destructions will follow one after another. So when we are, as we witness this coronavirus, this is something which is not coming. Uh, it's something which God has already spoken about it that they will come. But now the question is, can we do something about it? Yes, we can do something about it, and indeed we are doing something. Of course, we can definitely do more. But now, as we near the time of the end, we are told in the book Prophets and Kings, page 277, it says, The time is at hand when there will be sorrow in the world that no human balm can heal. The Spirit of God is being withdrawn. Disasters by sea and by land follow one another in quick successions. How frequently we hear of earthquakes and tornadoes, of destruction by fire and flood, great loss of life and property. Apparently, these calamities are capricious outbreaks of disorganized and regulated forces of nature, wholly beyond the control of men, but in them all God's purpose may be read. These are among the agencies by which he seeks to arouse men and women to, to a sense of their danger. You know, the Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 8, 28, for we know that all things work together for good to those who love the Lord and to those who are called by his name. So what is happening, God is actually helping us to know that the time is at hand. The time, is, uh, the time has come that we may prepare to meet him. This is actually, this is a challenging situation but in this challenging situation the question is, is is it God that has caused it definitely God has allowed it to happen now the question is, is it judgment of the world unless we can prove that this is a judgment of the world but if we cannot prove that then we cannot conclude that is a judgment of the world but however God has this to say in the book of 2nd Chronicles chapter 7 uh, from verse 18 if I shut up heaven that there be no rain if I command locusts to devour the land, if I send pestilence among my people, now the pestilence called coronavirus has come among the people. What then should the people do? God says to his people, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. What are the wicked ways? Eating those things which God say we should not eat eating those things which are unclean, doing those things which are contrary to the will of God. Then will I, if we turn from those things, the Bible says, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and will heal their land. God can restore our health. God can heal our land. God can actually stop this pestilence. It is within his power to do this if his people can tend to him. The time has come that we should pray together. We should pray for the nation. We should pray for the nations. We should pray for one another. And God has this promise in Exodus chapter 15, 26. And he said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and will do that which is right in his sight. Now the question is, what is his right in his sight? To obey his commandments, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep his statutes. I will put none of these diseases upon thee, which I have brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Therefore, even though I could have been affected by coronavirus, and I'm still alive. And if I turn to this God, this God of mercy and compassion can heal me from these diseases. This God of mercy and compassion can protect me from these diseases. How does he do it? He has given us a lifestyle and by adopting to this healthy lifestyle, we are set free. You know, the Bible makes it very clear that we should wash our hands. Proper hand washing is biblical. Proper disposal of waste is biblical.
Quarantine or isolating the, uh, those who are affected by an infection is biblical. Avoiding getting in contact with those infected is biblical. There is actually great wisdom to follow the principles which God has laid down. And as we follow those principles which God has laid down, then we set ourselves free. We can prevent or we can contain this infection. You know, we are given eight principles of a healthy living. The first is to trust in God. It's God that brings healing. The second is actually to walk in open air and enjoy fresh air, for our, which is good for our lungs. The third is actually to exercise daily. And also the fourth is to enjoy the sunshine. The fifth is to have proper rest so that the immune system can actually be uh, in rejuvenated so that our body can resist these viruses. The, fifth is, the, the sixth is actually to drink a lot of water. And also the seventh is to be temperate. And the lastly is to have a good nutritional balance, to enjoy fruits vegetables, grains, and nuts. These are the things that help us to prevent these viruses. What then should we do? The best at the moment is to comply with all the healthy laws and to follow the principles set aside, uh, the principles that has been laid down. This is a problem that we have as a nation. But however, by God's grace, following the principles laid down in his word, we can be victorious and God can protect us. It is very clear that uh, this uh, infectious uh, pandemic will be with us for a little while. The best we can do is to uh, remain vigilant. There is nothing to fear, but we just need to trust in God to live according to the truth that we have received, to live according to the health message that has been delivered to us. When we do our best, God will do the rest. We are yet to cover so many things about this topic. I encourage you to subscribe uh, to our channel, The Herald Report, and may the Lord bless you as we continue to soldier on and as we remain vigilant in fighting against this pandemic. God bless you. Amen.